Okay, so in this video, I just kind of wanted to go over some of the questions we get about our lathe. Um, I call it a tracing lathe. I've heard other people call it different things, but um, that's the way Grandpa always referred to it, so that's just what I call it. Um, this is a homemade machine. So it came with a company when we bought it, and the company's had four owners, so every owner has made some sort of modification to it. I have pictures of the original owner and what they used, um, and I've seen kind of a, a transformation through all of the owners who've had it, and of course we made modifications ourselves. Um, one of the things that Grandpa did was he refined it quite a bit. It cut pretty rough um, when we got it. It was pretty oversized from the original pattern, so Grandpa um, refined it quite a bit there. And then he also made a um, way that I can make a right-handed prop off of a left-handed pattern, which has come in handy several different times. I actually did it um, a couple times last week, actually, so that's been really great. I try not to because it requires some modifications then you have to set it all back up and it's kind of a pain in the butt but I can still do it which is great <laughs> um, then one of the other questions I get is what kind of saw blades we use so we use two 10 inch 10 tooth saw blades um, I like the 10 tooth the best because it is more of a chip sawdust than like a really dusty sawdust which is great for the shop um, and then Let's see, I change them, um, just, it just, whenever I look at them and think they're not cutting well, whenever they get dull, they will kind of ride up and not cut close to the pattern. So whenever they start um, showing like a little hump in the flat side, then I know it's time to change them. Um, now you do have to change them. You cut, rough cut one side and rough cut the other side, and then you can change them, but you can't change them mid-prop um, because one side will cut really well and one side won't, and then you'll actually be off the balance. So um, you have to change it at the correct time for if you change it in the middle of cutting a prop. And then, let's see, some of the other questions I get. Oh, a good one is, um, they say, why don't you use a CNC machine? Well, to be honest, I don't want to. <laughs> um, I love this machine, and it is so easy to make adjustments in pitch and to make adjustments, like I said, even in rotation. I can cut them longer, I can cut them shorter sometimes, depending. Um, I have a lot of modifications that I can make on the fly. Um, and so that's why I love this machine so much, just the way it is set up, just the way it is. And I love the uniqueness of it, just everything about it. So that's why I go with this one. I have no intentions of getting a CNC machine. I like doing things by hand. And since I mostly make vintage propellers, I love that I get to make them in a vintage way. Um, that's just what I enjoy doing. And no two props I make are hardly ever the same. I mean, I very, very rarely make two props that are exactly the same. So this just makes sense for me. Um, it does a really good job duplicating exactly what is in the top. Um, as you can see later in the video, you can see that it cuts the tip of this, even with its unique design. It does a really good job cutting it exactly the way it needs to. Um, so if you guys have any other questions or comments, you can drop them down below in the comment section and I will do my best to answer them all for anything that I didn't cover. And I hope you guys have a good week.